Well, welcome to ATG Live, a special Potathon edition of ATG Live. It is May the 4th. We are celebrating all day with Potathon, raising money for the Make a Wish Foundation. This is the fourth annual Potathon. We are having tons of fun. You're watching stuff all throughout the day. Amazing guests, creators, and most importantly, raising money for Make a Wish. So, Pete, we're here. It's ATG yes. Live time. Um, yes. There's been a lot of work that's gone into this. We are having a good time. How are you feeling? I'm good. This is our last interview of the day. And then after this, we're going to be giving away a lot of really fun stuff with our friend Jordan Hembrow. Um, but let's uh, let's not keep our guests waiting. Why don't we bring in Mr. Snap Wexley himself? <laughs> there he is. Uh, there What's he going is. on? Oh, Snap Wexley back from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> is he dead? Is he? Are we sure? I don't know. I mean, when you nobody's see on logo, camera. Yeah, exactly. You see an explosion and Poe yelling, snap! I mean, you kind of <laughs> kind of think. And, no and one's ever really gone. I've told you this story before, but for people that haven't heard the story, was, you know, JJ is my best friend. JJ is best friend in the whole world since we were five years old. And he said to me, you know, oh, look at this. Look at this. I mean, that's who's no, calling okay. me. Oh, okay. And guess what? No way. Guess Come what? On. Put them on. I am not gonna oh. call. Not gonna call. <laughs> Look at that! You heard it here first. Potathon ranked over that JJ Abrams. Really good. One moment. Um, so he knew you were amazing. talking about him. He, yeah, exactly. His ears were ringing. Um, so no, he, uh, you know, when he broke the news to me that that he had the chance to do this, and, and I was like, oh my god, we we're freaking out, right? And then we we're talking about it. We talk every day, and then he and then he tells me that he's actually going to be doing Star Wars. And he says, I think I have something cool for you or whatever. And then over the course of, um, you know, the, the when we were about to do the second film, episode nine, I remember him saying to me, all right, this is going to be really cool and you're going to die. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not dying. No. And so it was an argument between the two of us because I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? And then he told me this is not this is going to be the last one. He's not going to do anything. Else. Probably. You know, I mean, never say no. Right. But sure. And uh, and I was like, well, if you're not involved, then OK, I get it. But I love Star Wars so much. I said I couldn't believe that, you know, that that first of all, getting the opportunity. But then but it was a battle. Now we're working on uh, this new show called Duster. Uh, we just wrapped season uh, first season, uh, eight episodes for Max. Mm -hmm. And um, same thing. He's like, all right. So uh, and I'm not going to tell you, you know, whether whether I do die or not. But it was the same thing. It's like people tend to love like they're like, oh, we got to. Oh, it's great. Grover. Oh, you never. So there's this like love for my characters that they write these great characters. And then they're the ones that you'll be most disappointed. They could, you know, it's, it sounds kill. like it sounds like JJ's trying to Sean Bean you in every way that he can. <laughs> That's exactly right. I was just going to say, stay off of Game of Thrones, man. Stay away from R George R.R. Martin. He's a little the same thing. Maybe it's the two letters back to back, R.R. Martin, J.J. Abrams. I don't know. Yeah, That's Greg Grunberg. I have four Gs in my name, so I'm doomed. Oh, I'm yeah. Doomed. That, that, now it all makes sense, Greg. Now it yeah, all makes sense. Exactly. <laughs> hey, hey, by, by the way, before we go on, how are you guys? What's going on? Oh, man, just... It's it's been it's been crazy. So well, since we had you on last, we've actually we've we've uh, we've created this Thursday night live show, which is ATG Live, which we do usually, but we're doing it here tonight on uh, on Potathon. Yeah. We're good. We're just you know we're, we're loving bringing the Star Wars news and uh, and you know the community, the Star Wars community is it gets a bad rap, right? A lot of people say things like nobody hates Star Wars more than Star Wars fans, but the reality oh, is there's yeah. so many great people that we have the opportunity to talk to on a regular basis. And uh, just this, and, and that's kind of the whole thing uh, around Potathon too, is it's community. It's this great community of people, whether yeah. it's, you know, people who we see on the big screen like yourself or people behind the scenes or friends of ours who we've, Nick and I are, have become best friends and we've only met a couple times because we've met through star Wars and that, that's just so important. And, and so, yeah. Great. And you guys are in, you know, living in different prisons, so it's hard for <laughs> That's them. true. That is true. The different that's right. <laughs> Look, I, I, I will, whenever you ask, I'm on, I mean, the, this is the thing, the, the opportunity to become friendly with guys like you and, and that are sincere, that are really nice. I mean, everybody, I, I haven't met, although I, it's so funny that you say that because, <laughs> Every so often, I was just at a quinceanera, right? A good friend of ours had a double quinceanera, nope. and uh, or and and his his twins, and so it was like a, quince, a quinceanera and a quinceanero, which guys usually, I guess, mm -hmm. boys usually don't have it, but I mean, you have twins anyway. It was so beautiful, and my buddy Dennis, he's the dad. It was incredible, 
Yeah. And I'm sitting there and he, the pediatrician for his kids, he has seven kids. Guy was so nice and so sweet. And he's like, hey, by the way, I know who you are. And all these people are coming over and asking for pictures. It's like, so sweet. And he goes, I know who you are. And I'm like, oh, you're a genius. You figured it out. And, he goes, <laughs> and then he goes, what's going on? What happened with, the, with, with episode eight? I hated it. It was the worst. <laughs> like everybody has a strong opinion. And then I've heard the opposite. And then I've heard, you know, it's exactly right. And I think it's because they're, I mean, Star Trek's the same thing. There, these people, people are really smart. It's a very personal thing. It's a personal thing for me. I grew up with this. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's the, the mythology and the lore and like thinking where the characters could go, where they came from, agreeing and disagreeing with the story. It's, I don't know. It's, it, it, it's the best. I'd rather yeah. be a part of something. And I obviously had a small part, but I'd rather be a part of something that, that evokes that kind of reaction and emotion and intelligence than be a part of something where it's like, what was that? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I, I almost forgot about that. You know, it's just important. Mm -hmm. It's important. It, it's a great point. And I, I think that's just, and, and I like to believe that the majority of the people who come in hot on Rise of Skywalker or Force Awakens or Last Jedi, it's because this means so much to them. And it, it's, uh, you know, I mean, honestly, I have I have strong opinions on 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 a lot of it. But I also the other big difference is and it's funny that that the pediatrician came in hot with you on, on, a, oh, on a Star Wars. Movie. Now, now, now I got to tell you, he was he was three, four drinks in. <laughs> fair, fair, which is usually where I start. And yeah. he, he but he um, like Nick and I have this 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 sort of mantra is like you don't have to like something, but you're not allowed to be an asshole about it. Right. That's. I mean, and that's that's, that's the that's the basic simple thing that we try to to go with and and I see it all I mean I wear Star Wars shirts all the time I hand out podcast stickers and I tell people yeah. I that and, and it is funny you do get people who some of them are like so what do you think of the, what did you think of the sequels what, what where do you stand on those and you're and you're it, it's it's interesting. the litmus test you're waiting yeah. to see how and, where is this conversation going to go and when you right. have the One conversation the and, and you you realize they they think they didn't enjoy it or they think they loved it, but it's no they haven't had a chance to talk to about it with somebody who can who gets it. Because I mean, let's face it. I mean, my wife right now she's in the other room. She doesn't care about Star Wars, but somebody who cares about Star Wars needs somebody to talk to about it, and that's why yeah. we're so glad that we can we can do this sort of thing. Yeah, no, it's very very cool. I love it. I love it. And you know, today is a very busy day. I mean, it's you know, yeah, I get asked so much going to on. do a ton of stuff. You guys are in the top of my list. I, I know. You, you know, I, I'm hoping that you save the best for last but yeah, uh yeah, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely um well we're always thankful you're back we are you know we're gonna get to some star wars i know you've got a story we want you to tell us here in a little bit yeah. um but we're doing this for make a wish this is the fourth year that we're doing potathon raising money for make a wish now you've let got me talk about me, it wait, yeah wait, go I'm ahead. cutting you off i'm cutting you Please. off okay with the chewbacca beard i'm cutting you off here we go. <laughs> So, so I just want to say how much I, I love Make a Wish. Yeah. I, so, <laughs> so I have a band. Where's my band? Stuff? I don't have any band stuff here. But um, um, called the Action Figures, mm -hmm. and in that band is Scott Grimes, Adrian Pazdar. Um, you know, we've had a million other people guest and and come into the band, but um, Nick Marzak, Brad Savage, a bunch of people. But we have people coming and going, and it's um, you know, we're the we're action figures, so we're on stage. Everybody has an action figure right on stage. So, but, um, uh, we got asked to do the make a wish foundation, uh, gala in, in LA and it was so great. And now mm -hmm. we're getting inquiries from all make a wish is a massive, massive organization. They do yeah. so much good work. So I'm so glad that you, when you, when I heard, when you told me before, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, that's, that's smart. That's real Ab outside of epilepsy, which is my big cause, which sure, we're talking about. Sure. Yeah. I'm just I'm so happy that you're doing that. How did you guys get hooked up with them? So four years ago during pandemic, uh, me and a couple other podcasters, uh, we said, you know, right now charities were getting hammered. Right in the, in, in 2020, we also that same year we also did something for Toys for Tots. It was one of those things where I, I don't know, and it's it's not in any way meant to. I mean, look, you do a lot with charity too, and it's. Uh, you, when you talk about it, sometimes you feel kind of strange because you feel like you're kind of uh, humble bragging. But the reality is we said we need to do something for charity. And we had that because we did podcasts, because we did live streaming, um, we had a platform. We had a, we just talked about it before. We had made friends across the Internet, across yeah. the country, across the world. 
And we said, let's see what we can do. The first year we raised about $5,000. Last year we raised over $15,000. So every year is getting a little bit bigger, a little bit brighter. Um, And um, it just, you know, again, I, I was I was talking to somebody at a party the other day, and it's just a matter of just just give give a little bit, and that's the same thing. If if anybody who's watching this, but they don't realize, a te- if you think well, the ten dollar donation doesn't do anything, it does a lot because oh, yeah. all of those donations add up. Yeah. Um, as as you know, I spoke this mo- uh, this week to um, one of our our partners at Make a Wish, and they reminded me. And this fact, this is a number that kills me, and it's 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 true. Make a wish can grant they grant a wish on the average every 33 minutes and they're, they're able to grant a wish. But a kid is diagnosed with a life changing illness every 20 minutes, oh. which means that they are constantly playing catch up. And then the other big and important thing for me uh, is that nine out of 10 doctors, they did a study, nine out of 10 doctors said that a make a wish makes a difference in that fight. So your ten dollars, your twenty dollars, your fifty dollars. Yeah. You can't measure what that means. And it's not always just sending kids to Disney World or to no, no, no. Hawaii. It's a bike. It's a it's a yeah. PlayStation. It and makes by the way, difference. whatever yeah. that is, it, yep. it lets them know this is what my thing is all about. We'll talk about mm-hmm. it, that they're not alone, that there are people right. that care, that there's other going through it, that there's compassion out there. Um, and also it lets the caregivers know. I'm doing a series called the caregiver series. If you go to caregivers, the mm-hmm. caregiver series.com. I'm traveling around the country and I'm, I'm taking caregivers out for a day of care, right? I partnered with Jazz Pharmaceuticals and supports, talk about it, my podcast, and they, uh, they, they've been amazing. And it's like a real show. I, I host it, mm-hmm. but I'm so proud of it because, you know, it, when you sit, there's a shorthand that you have with another caregiver. And just like make a wish, when they see, when I see that somebody donated $10, $10 is easier to donate than $100, $1,000, $10,000. But when you see that, it's so easy that other people are like, oh, it takes yeah. the onus where you're like, oh, it's okay to mm-hmm. donate $10. $10. Then 20,000 people donate $10, $10 and now you got 200 grand. Yep. So it's like, yep. it's, I think I did the math right. But that's yes. <laughs> that's really great. I yeah, mean, I think, it is. I think it's awesome. So yeah. And and you know. for me, and just to add on to that, talking about Make-A-Wish, one of my best friends here in Alabama, his daughter... Um, suffers from Rett syndrome and she is a recipient of make a wish. And not only, and I love that I've watched some of your caregiver videos. They tear me up every time, Mm. but the like my friend, Matt, like he and his wife and Violet has a brother. And so they were also recipients of that make a wish, because like you said, it's not just, you know, the child receiving the wish, but it's the caregivers. It's the family, somebody like a brother who's there in the background, loving, supporting, doing what brothers do. Yeah. but don't always necessarily get the attention because there's someone else going through something. Yeah. And so it's so powerful. And so to be able to know, you know, people that we're connected to that have had these experiences and been affected by this, that just makes it that much more. Yeah. Powerful. And also, you know, that you're affecting a person's life. A lot of these charities, you know, they're, they look, make a wish has costs like everyone else and they've got to take mm-hmm. care of their costs. And, but in addition to that, you know that your money is actually helping. We, right. uh, our band, um, we got asked, it was through a friend, Chris Kelly was a member of the band. He's an incredible guy. And I remember, I think it came through Chris, somebody at his church or something found out that there was a make a wish. There was a child who had to make a wish and they don't grant international wishes, make a wish. Mm-hmm. But if you want to go to Europe, they, that's not a wish that they can do for, for various reasons. It's not the money. It's sure. just, yeah. And so we said, uh, and, there, and that girl was a big fan of the, of the band. So we were like, okay. And so she was having a party. I remember it was at Shakey's at Pizzeria. And they were like, okay, can so maybe can somebody stop by? And we were like, yes, no problem. Here's what we did. We all stopped by. We all walked in. And one at a time we walked in and she was like, I, what's going on? And all these celebrities walking in. And she knows we're part of the band, right? And we were like, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. And then we sang happy birthday to her. And then we said, so here's the thing. We know that uh, you want to go to Europe. Um, so uh, good news, bad news. Uh, the good news is you're going to Europe. And she was like, <laughs> oh, my God, what? And we're like, the bad news is you also have to endure one of our concerts. And we sent, <laughs> we sent her a limo and her and her mom and her friends came to one of our shows. And then she also got to go to Europe, got to go to London. It was amazing. And it was all, you know, so for cool. us, it was part of, you know, we raised money for charity. So it was like, it was great. You know, we gave the, some of the money to them directly and they did it. But to have that, to know that you're affecting a family. Yeah. Yep. Is, it's really important, not just throwing it at a 
you know, hoping that they'll find a cure for something, you know, that's important too. Sure. But, but it's, it is, it's just wonderful to know there's going to be somebody who actually gets a wish by yeah. the way. Right. You know. Yeah. It's, well, and it's, speaking it's of those wishes, anybody that's watching right now, go to the potathon.com, scan that QR code that's right there in the corner of the screen, go donate, help us out. That's what we've been doing all day. That's what we're doing through the rest of the night. We're going to give prizes away in a little bit. It's yeah. not too late. Jump in there, share it with a friend, send it to your grandmother, whoever you can. <laughs> yep. Jump yep. in there, S send, send some more folks some wishes, help us out. Exactly. And for, for you old fogies who don't know how to use a QR code, B I T <laughs> dot L Y slash potathon 24. It's that. so That's easy. Right there. Come on. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Well, and let's talk a little bit. My dad would be like, what? Yeah. What, are, <laughs> yeah. what are those dots on the screen there? I can't, <laughs> can't make it Going out. Like this. Going like this, like trying to get it off. <laughs> yeah. Can I tap on that? Right. Yeah. I'm trying to press yeah. the button. I can't make it work. Uh, so tell us a little bit about, talk about it. I, I, again, another really amazing cause. Thank you. Um, yeah. So Jake, our oldest son, we have three boys and, and Jake is 27 now and he's doing great. I mean, he works at Bad Robot with uh, JJ's oh. godfather and godparents, JJ and Katie, but he also, he's second degree Taekwondo uh, black belt. He's, he's got a great girlfriend, Morgan, and and all of his life. He's just living his best life. He's doing great. And he um, has epilepsy. Mm -hmm. And when he was seven, he was started having seizures. We went through what I call the car wash and the, and the roller coaster of, of this. He's had two brain surgeries. He's taking medication that's saving his life. And uh, but it's you know, he's an example of something who's living well with it. A lot of people aren't. But a lot of people are are experiencing what we experienced a few times, which is just feeling alone and not having a voice, not having, you know, not realizing that three plus million people just in the U.S. alone, mm -hmm. 65 million people around the world are dealing with seizures and epilepsy. And so you hear that number and it's like, okay, but when you, you need something tangible, you need, you need somebody, I, I took it upon myself to be that face of epilepsy as much as I can remove the stigma. It's scary to see someone have a seizure, but at the same time, mm -hmm. if you know what to do, you turn them on their side, you make sure they're not scraping their head against the ground. The seizure is going to stop. And if it doesn't stop after two and a half minutes, call the paramedics, but never stick anything in their mouth ever. Mm -hmm. All of these messages are at are on our podcast. I do a podcast called Talk About It, and I also have and on, and, and videos from every celebrity you can ever imagine. Everybody mm -hmm. I've, I've worked with, from Lady Gaga, Jennifer Garner, Harrison Ford, everybody's affected by this. I just had yeah. Lake Bell on the podcast. Her daughter has epilepsy, and um, Josh Dumel uh, was just hosting the walk here in L.A. Um, he has a family member affected, and it's just unfortunate, but fortunate that we can bond together, we can come together. Another thing, by the way, I, I want to say is that these these communities that are like Star Wars is so strong, like the fan base gets behind a cause, Star sure. Trek, they get Absolutely. behind a cause, man, it's amazing. So I'm trying to harness the power of all that celebrity as bullshit as it is, it's important, <laughs> it grabs attention, you know, to get people and eyeballs. So if you go to talkaboutitonvideo.com, you'll see all the videos. You'll see all your favorite people asking these questions and then doctors answering them or go to the caregiverseries.com and see these videos. But talk about it has been it's been really great. And this this I made these hats up, you know, because we this was our team at the walk uh, nice, to nice. talk about it. And then it's got the, you know, the, the URL on the side. But it's it's great. And we we raise awareness. We remove stigma. We don't ask for any money, unlike you clowns that are asking for money. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, and we support, and we support, and now we're branching off into other causes and other things. We're doing autism. Uh, we're doing Alzheimer's, cancer, whatever. Um, we just had all these people. Uh, Efren Ramirez was just in. Howie Mandel was just in. I'm getting these celebrities into do the podcast. They're doing PSAs for me mm -hmm. um, to talk about rescue meds, to talk about all the stuff that's important in any condition, but then we talk about stuff that's important to them. And so right. like how we went off on AFib, he's got AFib. We talked talk, this and it's just great. It's talk about it. It's been a great platform and it's really exploding with the help of guys like you that are helping me get the word out. So, so uh, well, we're happy to, and, and you know, you, I've worked in healthcare before and I think what's really unique about what, what you're doing with talk about it is again, you can also tie it in a way to, make a wish and that you're supporting the support group because I think that that's, yeah. that's the thing. I mean, yeah. right now, I mean, <clears throat> without TMI, we're dealing with, you know, we're dealing with stuff with 
parent age stuff, right? Yeah, so am I. And and that support group that we need to support, that, like just to keep ourselves from losing our minds, right? To to feel like, hey, we're not the only ones going through this. It's a, you yeah. know. It's, so, um, the, by the way, I just saw, and I know this is not time to be funny, but you just reminded me of something. <laughs> <laughs> There's a comedian. I just I don't I don't know who he is. I'm going to butcher, but I saw it on social media today. It was so funny. He was like, do you remember when your kids were like really, really little and then your your parents came over and they were like, oh, we'll watch them for a little bit. He said, he said, when grandparents come over and watch the little kids, it's like somebody returning to a job they haven't done in 35 years <laughs> and going and going, oh, yeah, I, I used to do this. No, no, no. And you're like, no, no, no. Everything's different. You know, and they're like, ah, feed them sugar, do this, do that. Yeah. It was just so funny. But it's, it, it, it is, it's interesting because I'm, you know, my mom has early onset. And my dad is 92 this year. Mm. And, you know, it, this is this is a whole other level of caregiving that everybody relates to. I yeah. don't know exactly what you're talking about, but it's it's yeah. very it's tough. It's a whole new thing where you go, wait, roles are being reversed here. Yep. And there needs to be tons of understanding. There needs to be talk about talk about talking about it. Like we need to be able to have open dialogue with our spouse, with our our siblings, you know, because yep. our cousins mm -hmm. or aunts and uncles, everybody needs to have compassion, slow down. No, you're not right. I'm not right. You know, it's like, it's the, yeah. how is the care going to, it's just, it's, it's brutal, man. And, and the stress of the caregiver, whether it's an epilepsy parent or a cancer kid patient, yeah. uh, uh, parent or, or taking care of a parent, there's, there's, there's something to be said to be able to just sort of sit down and, you know, talk about it, which is just such a brilliant, name to do to to go with on all that stuff so yeah yeah so but love it that's well, great and i want to i want to ping on something that you talked about too greg you said you know these communities star wars star trek you know they respond when there's causes when there's things i'd love your insight why do you think it is what do you think it is about fandom communities that respond in this way when there's causes going on i think it, i think because it it elongates the love you have for something common, like something, mm -hmm. some commonality. I really do believe that we, we all want to be yeah. a part of something. Sure. And it's, you know, um, I just recently lost a, a, a guy that I really consider to be a really, a, 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 he was a friend and I didn't even, I never met him in person, but he, and he, he lived, you know, he lives somewhere else. I had he and his wife on the podcast and I just fell in love with him and his family and everything. And unfortunately he just passed away, but we, we bonded over stuff and he was like, God, you're so different. You're this liberal crazy guy out there, you know? And, and I'm like, what does that have? Who cares what I think we're all. And so there's something that binds us. Right. And we, our love for star Wars, our love for star Trek are, but it's also not, not just a love for it's a love for what it means. Mm -hmm. It's a love for hope. And, and, you know, and there's so many messages and so many things that thematically we hope affect our lives and stuff. And we're all, when we all respond to it, we may disagree on the story, but we're responding to the message and mm -hmm. we can all agree on the message and we all love a good ending and hate a bad ending and, and want hope. And so it's when you, when you give the, another reason for that glue to stay together longer, I think that's why people are like, Hey, and also you want to be a part of something that actually makes a difference. Right. Yeah. Today, all we're doing is separating each other and hating on mm -hmm. each other, and it's us versus them. And we're we're just it's being reinforced so that people get power and they're using us as pawns. It's like just like <laughs> we all love Star Wars. Hey, we can all make a difference because we all came together because we all right. met. That's what it's all about, man. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. great. And I think that's a great observation. I think it's yeah, I mean the, the communities, um, I mean that's what the word community means, right? You're coming together for something yeah um yeah. so we've we've said the word star wars and the words star trek i i have to ask are you you're the only actor i can think of off the top of my head who's been in both star wars and star trek i'm oh, sure no. I'm, am i missing Pegg. like i'm probably missing some Pegg really obvious oh yeah simon Pegg. Oh, simon Pegg. Pegg. right uh deep, uh deep roy has been yeah. in both. oh right but yes. these people have not necessarily been in both without prosthetics correct That's the thing i told yeah. simon i was like simon no 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 it doesn't yeah, yeah. <laughs> deep cuts people know but dude yeah. come on now i didn't write a star trek i didn't the guy is so much more talented than i am but i still um no there are there are a few people um but i'm i seem to be the the 
bearing the torch of of that proudly, so proudly. But yeah. always people are like, "What's your favorite? If you could pick between one, you know." And it's like, "Give me a break, man." What's the, the my light, latest residual check? Which one was that from? Okay, that you know, I love <laughs> That's them. Today's equally. favorite. <laughs> I love them equally. I really do. I mean, I. I have to say, I was not a giant Star Trek fan growing up. I just wasn't. That wasn't, you know. So it was very intimidating when I go to these. Like, my band is playing Star Trek convention in August. Um, we're going back. We played last year. And they asked us to play again in Vegas. And it's it's amazing. The first time that I got asked to go to a convention and then host, I had to interview um, Chatner. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, what? I don't know these. I don't know enough. And and Wheaton, uh, Will was like, dude, just ask one question and then get the fuck out. <laughs> yep. Because Bill will just talk. And Bill, Bill's, got it. Bill's got it. Bill's got it. Bill's got it. Like, drop the mic into his hand and you're good. And and that's that's exactly what happened. But also, don't admit that you know anything more than you do. When someone says you know, oh, remember that thing and the thing. If you don't remember, it's okay right. with these, you know, with these uh, cannons to go. I, I People come up to me and they're like, you know, your mom was such a great pilot. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> and then I have to research it and look it up. You know, it's it, it's okay to not, you know, know as much as other people. Mm -hmm. Don't pretend, you know. Right. And That's the right. communities are sweet. They'll guide you through it, you know. Yes, it, it's yeah. I mean, but come on, yeah, Doctor Bones, you had to have, you know. <laughs> I know. Well, there's or that. Mr. Bones, Mr. Bones. See, I I'm a Star Wars guy, so and he, I you don't even get it either. I know, I know. I, I was gonna let it go, but uh, he was gonna, yeah, he was gonna let you slide, Pete. Good job. Oh, uh, well, you know, the entire Potathon, people can start asking for refunds on their donation. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. That's he didn't right. know who, who Mr. Bones was. Uh, uh, can uh, I well, tell my Star Wars story? Star Trek, I, got Star Wars. Bones. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> speaking of Star Wars, you have a story for us. We yeah. have talked to you before. You're on a couple of years ago. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, tell this, us this story because I, I've heard part of this and I, I'm ready to hear the whole thing. Okay. This is insane. Um, so... Um, my son, who was the inspiration, I'm just going to plug the plug away. Mm -hmm. Yes, my son, who was the inspiration for Dream Jumper, my graphic novels, book book book, book one and two. You get them on Amazon name. right now, right? I mean, they're still there. Yeah. on Amazon. Oh no, right? no, yes. no. Yeah. Go get it. Go. Scholastic, put it out. It's my, it's about my a kid. son loves it. My son oh, freaking loves it. Yes, I, yes. I'm so glad. Yeah, it's about a kid who's able to jump in and out of his friends' dreams and save them from their nightmares. Stuff's happening with the books. I can't talk about it, but I'm so excited about it. Anyway. Nice. So the, key, my, the the main character's name is Ben, and my son Ben is the one who had this nightmare, and it all started from there. Anyway, so I'm shooting shooting uh, episode nine, and it's Christmas time, and everybody's on vacation, and I decided this is the perfect time to bring my my family had never been to Europe. Uh, my my wife and I had, but uh, my boys hadn't. So I said, okay, let's go over to London. So they came over. We were shooting at Pinewood, and so I. Uh, we came over there. I didn't realize. I mean, of course, when they came over, we're seeing all the, the sights and going around London and it's just great. And then I said, OK, we're going to go out to Pinewood. We're going to go to the stages. And they're like, oh, oh, this is going to be great. You know, so we get there. And as soon as we check in, they're like, all right, so no one's here right now. So no photos. Right. <laughs> you can't, can't have your phones. You got. And we were like, OK. And this head of security said, I'll take you guys around. So he takes us around. He takes us on stage. As soon as they get on stage and he closes the door, he goes, can I have a picture? And I was like, what? <laughs> nicest guy, nicest guy you can imagine, right? So he he was just so sweet, showed us everywhere. And one of the things he showed us was the Falcon. And he showed us the, the cockpit is separate on the Falcon. So I've told the story of JJ and I, or JJ was already shooting, but I'm walking through the Millennium Falcon, not allowed to have my phone. You know, I've got my phone out. I'm like, what are you gonna what are you gonna tell me? I'm JJ's best friend. What are you gonna say? And I was shooting. It was just like that, you know. Chewy, we're home moment for me. Yeah. I was like, this is incredible. Anyway, so it was all dark and it's not very impressive when the, the, the Falcon's impressive. We, we took pictures in there and everything. But then um, the cockpit is separate. It's off the ground and it's it's all wide open. So it's just a bunch of you know, it's the inside is all there, you know, um, and having flown an X-Wing, I can tell you things are held <laughs> together with rubber cement. Things are falling apart. I mean, it's like it's, it's what you expect. Right. But it's it's really impressive. Anyway, he says, no, you boys have to go up there. They got to sit in the cockpit. So, OK, so he gets a ladder and it goes off, gets a ladder, brings it over and says, all right, boys, get up there. They all climb up and now they're in the cockpit. And he goes, all right. I couldn't even take a picture of them because it was 
you know, six feet off the ground was their feet. And then they're up there and, and he got, and the guys, and they're up there and they're like, Whoa, this is so cool. Just sitting in here, just being in here. And it's on a gimbal. That's why it's off the ground so that they can move it and everything. So he then says, um, okay, he, I got, he goes, wait, I got to go get another ladder. Something happened with the ladder. He's like, I got to get another ladder to get them off. So he goes, goes to get the other ladder, comes back. We get down. We walk around the lot a little bit, exteriors, um, and then we go and we're in the car. And my son says to me, um, and I go, and they were like, Dad, thanks so much. That was so cool. I'm like, absolutely, no problem. And then I hear Sam go, then tell him, tell him. <laughs> and I'm like, what? What just happened? And he goes, well, I, sh- I shouldn't have. But And this is something that any other dad may have gone, what did you do? And scold your son. <laughs> Proudest moment of my life. He goes, um, hey, Dad. I stole Chewy's seatbelt. <laughs> I stole Chewy's seatbelt. Now, you have to understand, when I'm shooting, I was shooting Star Wars, my badge, they, I mean, this, I wanted a badge. I wanted my badge. That's all I wanted. No. As soon as they said cut, they came over and they were like, all right. And they made sure they get all the props back and everything. They done. I wanted my helmet. I wanted my, my jumpsuit. I wanted anything from Star Wars. Nothing. <laughs> and I can tell you, Billy Lord, Billy told me that even Carrie got nothing. Like they back then, they held on to everything, you know. So you have to like kind of be sneaky. I was like, Ben, you are my favorite son, and will be my favorite son forever. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, dude, how cool is this? That's amazing. Is. Yeah, right and, and, and I'm sure there are 16 of these. I'm sure, but <laughs> then I don't know if you remember, but like Ryan Johnson had uh, um, months, whatever years, a couple of years later, or whatever. Oh, no, it was before. Uh, somebody had asked Ryan Johnson about the seatbelts in the Falcon. That was a question <laughs> that people asked. Did they wear seatbelts? And he responded. He was like, yeah, Chewie's got a seatbelt. I was like, oh, my God. Like, he's <laughs> out there. It doesn't work anymore, but he's got a seatbelt. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> get get a little nervous. Somebody's narking you out or something. You got to be right. careful. Right, <laughs> exactly. But I, I got to say, as soon as my character went down in a ball of flames, I'm like, dude, yeah. are you yeah. kidding me? I got a seatbelt. <laughs> I it's my seatbelt now. Yeah, come after me. Who cares? <laughs> so, no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just so, I'm so. It's, it's the highlight of my career. I've had, I've been so lucky, you know, to work with amazing people and everything. But to be a part of Star Wars for me, just because it meant so much to me, and then to be able to make a difference and meet guys like you, and then also, you know, be able to to do something to help um, make a wish. You know, it's one of my favorite charities. It's just awesome. It's all. It just gets well, better and better. It's truly fantastic, and this has been so much fun. You're always so good to hang out. You have the best stories. You bring the best energy. We cannot thank, thank you, you enough for joining us today. Um, we want to encourage everybody to support Make-A-Wish. Hit that QR. Hit the code. Hit the address. Yeah. All those things. But also, um, we want everybody to check out your stuff, too. Make sure everybody knows yeah. where they can find that. Absolutely. I'll tell you about all my stuff. Follow me on Twitter and I, I'm constantly or X or whatever. I'm constantly posting there and Instagram, Facebook um, and TikTok. But also, um, yeah, go to talkaboutit.org, talkaboutitonvideo.com um, and thecaregiverseries.com. And uh, one last thing I will tell you is one of my favorite, you reminded me, one of my favorite things to do when arguing with people about Star Wars or you know, passionately discussing, I should say. <laughs> Star Wars or anything else, some people want me to solve arguments. And I and they they've asked me, one of my most popular cameos is having somebody go have Snap Wexley just clear it and end the conversation and the argument for them. And it's awesome. I'm breaking up couples now on I think cameo like the novelty is over. So I'm literally, oh look at this, look at this. Hey, hey. hey. Oh, what? <laughs> Snap Wexley happen? dies again in the ball of things. <laughs> Um, but, but the, the cameos that people are asking me to do right now are hilarious. And a lot of them are, you know, can you solve this, this argument we're having once and for all about episode seven? I mean, it's just hilarious. So awesome. uh, go to cameo and, and, and book me. I'm more than happy to, you know, tell your uncle Lou to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's what everybody needs. That's everybody yeah. needs. Well, Greg, we truly cannot thank you enough. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. No, you guys are great. Um, it's been a fantastic day and Pete. May the force be with you. Hey, Always. May the force be with all of us. And thank you. You didn't ha- you did not have to help a charity. And people need to remember that. You guys are good guys. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, sir.